This is it. Oh, this is it. Okay. Well, hello, welcome. I know you're here for the tour tonight, and I'm Evelyn Culp, and I'm here to start your tour. So you are in for an evening of excitement and adventure tonight because our museum has come alive. And if you didn't already know, this is the 10-year anniversary of Night at the Museum. So when I first started thinking about creating the Heritage Collection, I started collecting artifacts from people's garages and attics. And pretty soon, we had enough items to fill a whole room. Can you imagine? How fancy is that? So in 1971, we opened the Heritage Collection Room in the basement of the Napanee Public Library in honor of their 50th year anniversary. What an exciting time that was. I just wanted people to learn more about our history and our community. Well, since then, our museum has grown by leaps and bounds. We now have over 45,000 artifacts in this 10,000 square foot building and home. How exciting is that? And tonight you'll get to experience a little bit of that. And if you haven't been here in a while, you'll notice that the museum underwent a renovation in the last year. This has been an exciting time. Now I wonder where your guide got away to. I suppose they've been off reporting on the next big news story in Napanee. Well, there he is. Do be sure to stay with your guide tonight. You wouldn't want to get lost. Hello, my name is Chris. Are you all ready for our journey through the museum? Yes. Wonderful. Well, this year we have new scenes along with past favorites. In 10 years, we've been able to share over 70 scenes of Napanee history. Be sure to stick with me throughout the museum. We certainly don't want you to get lost. Come, come. Watch the threshold as you go through this. <laughs> The Thursday Club started as the Thimble Club in 1899, and it was the result of weekly meetings at the Mrs. J.W. Carpenter's house. They met to knit and sew items for children. Nine years later, they changed their focus, becoming a literary group and renaming themselves the Thursday Club. Uh, their work included locally supporting the high school band, furnishing books and glasses for students, and teaching Bible in school. Bell Stauffer decided that the group should rally behind efforts to bring a public library to Napanee. The club worked in 1916 to raise funds for that public library. Let's listen in on one of their planning meetings for their art exhibit to raise funds for a library. Library. Okay. So I'll be going to the 
those women free flowers, especially if they were able to borrow 700 curio cabinets. That one week in June of 1916, the Thursday Club was able to raise $31.50 to go towards a public library. The Thursday Club is still around today, and Jacob Hartman happened to serve on the very first library board. There are so many more people to thank for a public library, but the Thursday Club was the springboard to start the idea. Let's continue to meet supporters of the public library. Claude Stoops came to Napanee in 1888 from Noble County. He was a man of innovation. He operated a jewelry store for 25 years until he decided that Napanee needed a telephone company. He started the Napanee Telephone Company in 1898. When the Ladies Library Association formed in 1895, he served as a collector of subscriptions. In 1919, he was appointed to the newly formed library board and served on the committee to find a property to purchase for the library. He was the key person who started the library fund to build the 1936 library. Well, oh, uh, hello, are you here to raise funds for the new library? No, we're just passing through. But could you tell us more about your efforts to raise funds for our library? Sure, sure, sure. Well, we'll have to go back to my original involvement in the public library. You see, my sister-in-law, Bella, carried the first petition to garner an interest in a public library, and I was appointed to the very first board. Wow, that's wonderful. What were a couple things you did for the first year of having a library? Well, me, Noah Lehman, Jacob Hartman were put on a committee to find an area for a public library. Uh, we found, well, not only that, but we were also supposed to raise funds to buy said area. Um, we found two suitable areas, and the one we chose is the best place in Napanee because it was large enough to permit us to build a nice big building and also have a suitable lawn. It cost about $9,500, and we were able to raise that through subscriptions. Well, not really. You see, when the time came to pay for the public library, we had only raised about $7,500, and we had to find a way to raise the last $2,000. So, Claude, uh, the library has always been in the same location? Yes, we were able to use an old house on the north end of the property. It had been John Keller's house. Um, I took a trip to New York to talk to the Carnegie Foundation. You see, I found that Napanee could favor greatly from the Carnegie Foundation and that we needed a strong library building, but also Goshen had received funding from the Carnegie Foundation for their public library. Did they help build the library in Napanee? It looks an awful lot like a Carnegie library. No, you see, by the time the Napanee Library opened its doors, the Carnegie Foundation had switched its years and was in the war effort. Um, if they ever decide to start funding libraries again, I feel that Napanee is in a favorable position to receive such funding. Let's see, uh, I took two other trips, one to Washington, D.C., and another one to Indianapolis to try and find the funding. Back then, it was really hard to find the funding necessary, but we were able to get it through a WPA grant, and we have such a beautiful building because of it. Wow, it sounds like you did a lot of legwork for the library. <laughs> that is true, and well, we have that beautiful building to thank for it, to show off for the rest of the city and also anyone surrounding it. Uh, it's something that everyone in Napanee should be proud of. Mr. Stoops, I was just telling these fine folks that you are responsible for the telephone company in Napanee. Why, yes, I am. Uh, the telephone is the greatest invention to ever be created. Um, I started the Napanee Telephone Company in 1898, and it had about, let's see, 54 telephones and the capacity for 100 telephones. Whoa. <laughs> Where was the switchboard located? In my very own jewelry store, you see. I was in the jewelry business before I was in the telephone business. Um, the telephone operated from about 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and it was so profitable that after 25 years in the jewelry business, I decided to pack up shop and devote my time to the, to the telephone business. Uh, by 1916, we had about 
720 telephones. We had laid 12,000 feet of cable. We had six operators, two linemen, and 24 hours service. Wow, that's great, Mr. Stoops. Thank you so much for all of your promoting of Napanee, for the telephone, and the library. We best be moving on. It's been a pleasure. Napanee is capable of many great things. You should try to find my sister-in-law, Bella. She loves the library just as much as I do. Sadly, Mrs. Stoops passed away shortly before the library board received word that they've been awarded the PWA grant from the federal government to build the 1936 library. His son, Lamar, said that his father's last words were, we got the library. Come, let's find more people throughout the museum. And when we go down these steps, watch your steps so you don't trip or anything. Next, we are going to meet Belle Stauffer. Belle was a big supporter and advocate for the library. She was first involved with the Ladies' Library Association. She started to engage subscribers to support the Ladies' Project to have a library in 1895. She canvassed for supporters and made sure not to exclude those who lived in the country. Belle and her husband, Horace, moved to Indianapolis in 1898 when Horace was elected to serve as a state representative. But the Stauffers moved back to Napanee in 1919. Bell hit the ground running. She thought that Napanee should have a public library. She went to work and carried a petition even though she faced a few challenges and opposition in achieving her goal. Bell was able to get enough signatures and presented it to Judge Drake so that he could form a library board. Bell never served on, never served on the library board, but she continued to be a library supporter and advocate. In 1927, Bell was in charge of a library fund benefit to raise funds for the library building. Bell passed away in March of 1936, so she never saw the building of the 1936 library. In 1941, a desk was given in her memory to the library and was placed in the historical room. Fun fact, Bell's brother-in-law was Claude Stoops. I'm trying to gather up enough signatures to present to Judge Trick for our library board. I'm sorry, we can't sign your petition. We're from a different time. Well, I have close to receiving enough signatures, and I hope to accomplish it in a few months. Some people actually do not think that we need a public library here in Albany. They like the idea of a subscription library. We have not had one of those in years. I hope you receive enough signatures, madam. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? My name is Belle Stopper, and my husband Horace and I recently moved here from Indianapolis. He served as the state representative. We had the chance to use the public library while we were there, and we fell in love with the idea of borrowing books. So now, I would like the same for Napanee. These children need to have a library. You mentioned a subscription library. What is that? Oh, years ago, we had this organization called the Ladies Library Association. It started back in 1895. The membership was just one dollar. It cost 50 cents if you wanted to renew a book after two weeks, and then 10 cents for the non-members. It was open on Saturdays from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Did you help in the library? Oh no, I made sure that everyone knew about that library and that they would be able to borrow books with a subscription. I also made sure that our neighbors knew about the library as well. Let's see, Nora Rushing, who married Mr. Blessing. She was the first librarian to work in that library. 
And then Nora Shively was also there, and I think she would make a fine choice to start the new library and help run it. But it was not only ladies that helped out with the library, it was gentlemen as well. Claude Stoops, my brother-in-law, was collecting the money, and he allowed people to drop things off at his jewelry store. What happened to the Ladies' Library Association? Well, as far as I can tell from these old letters, it looks like the library moved multiple times. It started out in the carriage factory, and then it went to Hartman Brothers, and then it just was located at different places up above the store. I think it finally ended up at Mrs. Flickinger's millinery store, but from there, that's where I lost track of it. Her shop would have been on West Market Street. The library was still open on Saturdays, but by then it was open from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. and then 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Do you think that is because the library was only open on Saturdays to why it didn't survive? I wouldn't be able to tell. It must have died out. Now, my sister-in-law wrote to me back in 1912, and she included this newspaper article from the Napanee News talking about why Napanee needed a library. I was so happy to hear when the Thursday Club decided to have a fundraising drive they had a great start, but then the great war broke out, and then all of those proceeds had to go to the war effort instead of the library effort. So now I'm back with this petition to get those signatures to present to Judge Drake, and I'm hoping we can get a library board started featuring the citizens of Napanee, members of the school board, and others from the town of Napanee. Well, we shouldn't take up any more of your time. You have a mission to complete, so we'll be on our way. Well, very well. Change your mind about signing my petition. Come and find me. <laughs> In 1873, there were only seven or eight farms, a few log homes, and a couple of sawmills in the woody and swampy area that would become Napanee. But just a couple miles north, Locke was a prosperous established village of two hundred with many growing businesses. The businessmen of Locke, however, suffered a life-altering blow when they learned that in laying out its route to Chicago, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad would miss the town of Locke by two miles. Locke businessmen and brothers, Henry and George Eby, were not going to let a golden opportunity steam past them. So close, so far. Access to the rails is essential for Locke to continue to grow. Our merchants have goods to bring in. Our producers have products to ship out. If the rails weren't coming to Locke, I decided I would bring Locke to the rails. b and was very agreeable when I was willing to donate five acres of land. In return, they would build a passenger house and station, Locke Station. I set the plan in motion, but then there was a hitch in my giddy up. A hitch? Mr. Eby seems a bit unhitched, if you'd ask me. Ha! Huh. You see, Mr. Culp and I own the land that he promised to the railroad. We're certainly not selling to him or his brother. We will be donating it to the railroad ourselves for a, state, for a depot in our new village of Napanee. I graded the side tracks and built up the station on B&O property. As station master, I ran the operation from the day the first train went through. I also provided a daily hack wagon to transport goods and passengers the two miles between the station and Lock Town. Where's that magnificent place called Napanee that I've heard so much about anyway? I checked my county atlas, but could find no such town in it. Surely you can't pretend to be ignorant of the fact that Napanee was founded in December 12, 1874. After the publication of the atlas, you might as well try looking for us in Webster's Dictionary. Now, as for us, we've staked out eight streets and 50 lots that practically surround what you call Lot Station. Staked out? You see, Lock is no figment of the imagination. Unlike Napanee, Lock is a finished town, and Lock Station is a successful depot. Lock Station on the b and Railroad is just two miles from Lock. In Napanee, the only railroad that the people of Locktown have is a two-horse road that runs between Napanee and Locktown. Little did he think of the judgment he pronounced on Lock. Although it is true, Locktown is finished. Go ahead and try to buy a lot of two before they're all sold out. Napanee thrived. Lock did not. 
But Locke's entrepreneurial spirit lived. Many in Locke realized that they could cut their losses by getting to Napanee. The movement of businesses, people, and dwellings from Locke to Napanee increased through 1875. Villagers moved commercial buildings and houses over frozen fields the two and a half miles from their quiet town to booming Napanee. Despite my best efforts to avert destruction, so furious is the one-way traffic to Napanee. It seems that Locke is shipping houses at the rate of two a week. And if the good slaying weather lasts a few weeks longer, we'll run entirely out of stock. We should keep moving. We'll follow that man, Mr. Call. The thick, dense forests of Napanee proved to be an asset to the pioneering folk. By November of 1875, less than a year after the B&O Railroad crossed in Indiana, seven sawmills and woodworking shops were in business. Up town of Napanee grew, grew in spite of what the railroad officials say. And a lot of people said that it was the most prosperous village along the line. Some newspapers even started calling it the New El Dorado, which certainly helped in the village. Cool. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like we are coming up on the depot. The milkshake train had been a little train that would pick up milk at dozens of stops. It took four hours to get as far as Gary. When it came back to Napanee in the evening, particularly on Sunday evenings, young people used to go down to the station to see it come in. Passengers could ride the train also, just as long as they were not in a hurry. University had two dances. It was, it was, it was fantastic. <laughs> For over 43 years, readers loved reading The Daily Misadventures of Smokey Stover and his zany boss of Cashew Nut. Yeah, I love the firemen. I mean, they ride around in the red wagons and play with the big hoses. And man, I just love them. When I started drawing for them, I, in their crazy adventures, I just loved them even that much more. But you know, that wasn't my only job. Down in the Five and Diamond store, I sold apples. And I was a great salesman because they'd come in for one apple, I'd sell them two. But didn't last long. 
They fired me because they got tired of me selling pears. <laughs> Smokey and the Chief drove to fires in his impossible two-wheel fire truck known as the Foomobile. Smolly Hulk, am I glad you brought that up on oh, the Foomobile. A guy from Francisville down there by Lafayette, Indiana, brought it to life. Isn't she grand? I mean, we entered her into the Indy 500 one time. We got food place. <laughs> hey, why don't you hop in? We'll drive around the block. <laughs> Try to get nose art, but they said they didn't have enough paint. <laughs> hey, my philosophy is simple work hard, do good, have fun. Get what I'm driving at? <laughs> Bill's 84 years were filled with generosity and comedy and will always be remembered for both. Merci, foo foo foo. <laughs> Let's keep moving. I want you to hear about a special item in our collection. In 1944, the Napanee American Legion put together and sent out a booklet of greetings to their citizens serving in World War II. It contained 36 pages of photos from the businesses, organizations, friends, and families of the town. There were photos of groups of people like the Vitreous Steel Products Company, uh, the American Legion Post 154, the police department, and the public service employees. Porky, it's Violet. I received a letter from Bud. He got his good homework. Oh, yes, it is. I can't imagine of what it's like to be so far away from home. He, he sends letters to home so much. Mother and I receive one at least once a week. We save them and read them over and over. But as mentioned, he cannot keep his. The mails weren't coming to lock. I decided I will read you his letter. Dearest Violet, I hope your Christmas was very merry. I received an unexpected and uplifting Christmas gift in the mail. A lovely book called Greetings from Home. I opened it up to find many pictures of faces and places in Napanee. Oh, home sweet home. I have not laid eyes on those familiar streets for such a long time. I nearly got choked up when I saw the picture of West Side Park, as I remembered how much time we had spent there. It looks like most of Napanee came out to pose for the photographs. It is really something. What a wonderful effort by those fellows at the Legion. Have you seen the book? I know Mother is aware of it, but I turned to page 22 and nearly shouted joy as I saw her smiling face among the other mothers under the soldiers. I know she was smiling just for me. I'm sure Miss Mom's holiday cookies this year. I have imported from a German village, or was left of one. There are very few inhabitants, as we are living in the rubble of their homes. After living in the mud for the past two months, and eating T and K rations for so long, I can't complain about it. At least it is warm and dry. I will admit that at times it is hard to imagine my life in Napanee. Everything around me seems so far away from anything I once knew. This is a grim and terrible task. Looking at that book, seeing those photos of friends and neighbors in the usual places, and reading the messages, well, it reminds me of what I am fighting for. It is comforting to know that all of Napanee's hearts and hopes are with us. I look forward to a time when we shall enjoy the holiday season. With your loving brother, Bud. Well, that's all that we have for you tonight. Thank you so much for coming to our 10th year of Night at the Museum. We can't thank you enough for all your support for the Heritage Collection. Whether you have hit the pavement with us on our walking tours, escaped our Napanee themed escape rooms, hit play to listen to our podcast, or joined us as history comes to life. We can't wait to see what the future holds. If this is your first time visiting, we sure hope you come back when the lights are on. As Evelyn Culp, our founder, once said, so many people say they hate history. It's been my goal to help them love it. We hope that we made you fall in love, 
with Napanee History. Make sure you come back and visit us when the lights are back on. The Heritage Collection is open Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 4.